changing my views. I'm getting more radical because it's, it's just reached cult freak show level. What do you make about my whole five minute rant you just heard? Well, I just don't understand how all of this seems to be appearing out of the blue. I mean, how do you not see hundreds of thousands of people pouring across the border? You know, hundreds of people raping and boats, rioting and like dragging people out of vehicles. And, yeah. Like the globalists have set this whole thing up. They instigated the chaos. They know it's coming. And then all of a sudden we see the images when it gets extreme. Whereas in, in America, we were never allowed to see the illegal immigrants pouring across our border. Wow even though it was hundreds of thousands, because it didn't fit their agenda here. You are totally on. In fact, this morning, I meant to make that point first and foremost. And then I get so upset by the time I go on air reading all the news that I just can't even do it. That you could see how they sort of tell the immigrants years ago, come, giving them freebies. They destabilize the countries. They let them in. They let it build till 800,000 are now come in total in the last few months. They're pouring through everywhere. That's the number we have. It's probably worse. And then suddenly their answer is, we got to take them all in. Exactly. You can see the premeditation of this. Right. And then if you don't want to take them in or if you're, you're a bad person, you're racist or you're evil, and getting everyone to sort of fight amongst themselves and fight against these some of these people who truly are fleeing madness, you know, to be angry at them, rather than angry at the people who have instigated this chaos and the policies and the war and the, you know, borders wide open policies that are bringing them all in. So it's, that's what we should be focusing on and fighting against. But instead it's like, you're a bad person because you don't want, you know, boys to use the girls bathroom or, you know, stuff that doesn't matter. Well, it's, it's all just psych, psychiatrists on record came out with this to mess us up. They said in the 60s, this was the whole plan, just to create total obsessions with our wee-wees, uh, you know, instead of like the big giant issues of cancer viruses and the vaccines. Uh, you and uh, Rob Dewar are going to be hosting the rest of the show. I'm going to punch out of here. But uh, these people mean business. Mm -hmm. They're moving on all fronts. And I wanted to ask Rob Dew, what do you make of Donald Trump now suddenly flip-flopping and, and going, yeah, we need to bring these illegals, uh, these migrants, into the United States. And Merkel's doing a great job. I mean, uh, you think conservatives are so on his hook now that they're going to now want jihadis in their bedrooms? I think this goes back to the fact that he signed that pledge, his loyalty pledge to the Republican Party. And now they're saying, look, you got to start playing ball with us or we're going to undercut you. We're going to get you out of this race. Uh, like what they did with Ron Paul, you won't even get mentioned. And then you'll you'll uh, go into obscurity because you know right now every time they say something positive or negative his ratings go up, so it doesn't matter as long as they're mentioning Trump. It's just like the golden goose; it keeps laying golden eggs for him. So I think he's starting to play ball because he got the message at some point on some level, and he probably will, will never admit it. Uh, it. It might come out later, like what happened with Ross Perot when he got out of the race and then he got back in, but it was too late to really affect. Yeah, I mean, who outcome. wants a President Trump if he's President Obama? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Or president globalist, whoever, you know, they're mm -hmm. all the same guy. They just change out the face. Uh, There's a great graphic you had. I, I believe it was an Obama deception as the, the guy pops up and then it changes to the next one, changes to the next one. And it, it doesn't matter who's really in charge. Those guys sure. aren't in charge. What do you and McAdoo got coming up today? Well, I found a, uh, a video from RT put out basically echoing the same things we've been talking about with this migrant invasion that's going on in Europe and how... Nobody, the mainstream media here in the United States is is taking the angle, oh, we have to help these people. What's the president going to do? How are we going to help these people? And not the focus on this is how ISIS is getting people into the country. You know, the only thing the American media is talking about is the Hungarian woman, uh, camera woman who tripped a migrant. Well, you know, these people are coming in illegally. I think no, she, I kind of agree invaders. with what she did, they're trying invaders. to stop invaders coming in. Stay so. there. Uh, you're hosting. All right. We are live. It's the fourth hour of the Alex Jones Show. I'm your host, Rob Dew, sitting in here in the uh, original radio studio that we built back in uh, January 2009 and December 2008. Moved in here uh, when I started in February. It was just one little part of a building. And slowly, with your help and your support, we've been able to expand uh, to where now we've got the giant nightly news studio out there, the radio show studio out there, and we're building, we're, we're using this one. We're revamping the original nightly news studio 
And we just keep doing this with your support. So we really do appreciate all the support out there that our PrisonPlanet.tv members have been giving us. This is a short segment. I've got Leanne McAdoo in the control room. We're going to play some clips that I saw from a report that RT put out. And they kind of sounded, they sounded a lot like what we're doing here at InfoWars. But you don't see any of these angles coming out of the mainstream media here in the United States. Well, now there's football season. Now there's deflate gate. We can just keep talking about these issues nonstop that really don't mean anything. So I want to get into that starting off. We're also going to get into a little bit of information about the food babe coming up probably towards the end of the hour. But thank you for joining us. This first video I want to get into, here's the article. ISIS fears. Hungry TV report suggests militants posing as refugees cross into Europe. This is something we've been telling you all about for a long time, that ISIS is going to use and be infiltrating into Europe and then also coming into the United States, going in through the southern border because it's basically wide open. It's basically controlled by drug dealers. So they could come into South America. Uh, I remember we had a we were playing a clip uh, and, and covering that a general, and this is back uh, January, February of this year. It might even been an end of last year where a general was talking about how they were finding guys from Africa who were getting into Central America and then getting on the beast train coming up into the United States unfettered as long as they paid their way. So this is how ISIS is going to get into America. We've seen the attack in Dallas. So they're already ramping this stuff up and now they are in Europe. And let's go to this first clip from RT. This is RT ISIS in Europe. There is alarm in Europe over allegations that Islamic State militants are infiltrating the continent by blending with crowds of migrants. One Hungarian TV network is even reporting that the security services have detained two militants who revealed their identities in photos on social media. Islam terroristák érkezhettek Európába. A közösségi oldalakra feltöltött fotók tanúsága szerint a most európai városokban. And so he's, he's speaking Hungarian there, and um, but what he's saying is Islamist terrorists disguised as refugees have shown up in Europe, and he was showing some pictures that were uploaded to Facebook. I actually have some more photos. Uh, it's uh, clip number three, guys. ISIS Europe photos. Let's just go ahead and roll that right now, and you can see. Uh, them as ISIS fighters, and then what appears to be them in Europe. These were all submitted to, um, to I, I guess they've been circulating around social media. And you can see the resemblance in these guys. Are they crisis actors? I mean, who knows? It is just getting weirder and weirder as it goes along. But this proves what we've been saying all along, that they are going to use this migration invasion, so-called crisis, to come into Europe and then cause disruptions in Europe and also, they're going to be coming into through South America up into the United States. So I think it's just very telling. I also want to uh, show you this clip. Um, and this is after they show the clip of the camera woman tripping the migrants. And I, I, I kind of, people are saying she's horrible and she got fired for doing that. And maybe she should not have interfered. But I think at a gut level, she said, look, these people are just pouring into my country. I got to do something. And as a journalist covering it, then I guess she also felt she had to step into the fray and she did trip a couple people. I don't agree that she should have been tripping people, but I understand where she's coming from trying to defend her country. But let's go to clip four. And this shows the mess that the migrants are leaving behind. And I just want you to look at the quality of tents that the migrants are being supplied with. Many of the migrants gave up waiting for buses to take them into a refugee camp and tried to break through police lines. Hundreds uh, fled into the surrounding cornfields, aiming to reach Budapest on foot. But this is what was left behind when the refugees continued their journey. Images of trash strewn roadsides like these are being spread online, along with plenty of criticism. But the migrants say they simply had nowhere to put it. And this is just one of the latest developments in the continent's ongoing crisis. Well, I'm interested to find out who is supplying them with brand new tents. They look like they uh, they just went to uh, Academy or REI or something like that and just loaded up with brand new tents that they're being given. They're being given these from somewhere. Maybe there's a guy um, at the docks in uh, Syria passing out tents as they go along. Um, interestingly, there's a, there was a graph, and I don't have it in front of me now, but it was like 77% of the refugees are men coming in, which is that is not families. That is uh, that is mostly men coming in, and they're doing that so they can disguise the fighters that are coming in. They're blending them in. It's really, really disturbing. Um, also, I want to cover, uh, this is something we tweeted out a couple days ago. Uh, guys, I'm going to bring up the tweet over here. And it was from Paul Joseph Watson showing how Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Cater, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, Oman, it's up right now, are, are not letting in any 
uh, of these migrants into their countries. They're keeping their borders closed. And we're going to talk about that wildly we're on the in March. McAdoo when we come back. So on September 7th, uh, Real Alex Jones, or at Real Alex Jones at Twitter, tweeted out the number of refugees that were being admitted into these very rich, very well-off Middle Eastern countries. Ones that made their, their money, essentially, selling oil to the rest of the world. And now, um, and there's a reason behind that. And I'm going to get into more of that and why that reason is. We're going to get Leanne McAdoo's take on these clips as well that I've been showing. Uh, but first, I just want to remind everybody out there that we are listener supported. And by becoming a PrisonPlanet.tv member, it supports everything you see here. Uh, all the TVs, sending reporters out, uh, the massive amounts of paper we print out every day to show you articles, to show you that this stuff is real and it's happening. Um, the satellite system uplinks, which is why we're throwing the money bomb on September 16th and 17th. That's going to be a really big event. We're going to go for 28 hours straight broadcasting here in all the different studios. And it's going to be quite a feat. We haven't done one of these in a couple years. So I'm really excited to, to put on another one again. And um, I'm going to broadcast, I think, two different times. I'm one late at night and then early in the morning with uh, Paul Joseph Watson right before the radio show. But there it is. We want to raise $1 million to reach $400 million, And we can't do that without your help. So go to Infowars.com forward slash money bomb. You can already start uh, contributing if you feel like it or just wait for the money bomb day on the 16th and 17th. And uh, by doing this, it's going to allow us to pay for the, um, the cost associated with sending a signal into a space to a satellite that can then go all over North America. That's Canada, the United States, Mexico. And we can really wake up a lot of people. It'll actually be more than 400 million people if we're able to get on all the local stations out there. So I encourage you to participate in the Money Bomb on this, uh, September 16th and 17th. You can go to Infowars.com forward slash Money Bomb. If you're listening to this on the radio right now and your radio station is carrying the fourth hour, call them up and thank them. If you are watching this at Infowars.com forward slash show where we put out the free stream that then uh, recycles for 24 hours till the next show, uh, call your local station. And ask them to take the fourth hour because we're now going to be doing the fourth hour every day. You will now get a bonus fourth hour of overdrive of the Alex Jones show. He did it for a while and then he stopped. Every once in a while he'd do overdrive. Well, now Alex put the word out that we are going to be doing this every day. So it'll be myself, Leanne McAdoo, Jakari Jackson, David Knight, uh, Joe Biggs, Anthony Gucciardi sitting in here hosting. It's been a, a real pleasure for me to be hosting this the last few days. Uh, it's really exciting. And especially after a few days, you really get used to it. But um, now I want to go back to those videos. Leanne McAdoo, are you there? And what do you think of what has been going on uh, now that, you know, it looks like RT is, you know, almost parroting Infowars with the information we're putting out. But we don't see this anywhere in the mainstream media here in the United States. Right. Well, that's the exact same thing we were experiencing with the illegal immigration issues at our own border that they didn't want anyone to know that criminals were coming through and drugs are coming through and. You know, they just want you to see the images of the young children and the families because that's how they can convince you to go along with the globalist solution. They create the chaos and then, you know, the solution is this globalist, borderless world that they control. Right. Where you can't say anything bad about Muslims, but they could cut your head off if they don't like you or they could cut your hands off or they could make women cover up. Or if you're in Germany, you're not allowed to wear a skirt now because you might offend somebody, but they can do whatever they want because, you know, they're Muslims. And I'm not trying to single out Muslims. That's how the political correctness culture breeds itself. It could be any group that they perceive is being hassled by the system. Now, I want to go to this clip here talking about, you know, we, we tweeted out that no migrants were accepted by these countries. We were actually lying. It's actually changed now. Um, apparently, they're opening their borders up. And let's see how many they're uh, accepting now. This is no Mideast help. The flow of migrants from the Middle East to Gulf states are coming under fire for keeping their borders closed. Human Rights Watch has criticized wealthy Arab nations for refusing to take in asylum seekers. The countries do provide significant financial and humanitarian help to people affected by Middle East conflicts, but are keeping their doors firmly shut since the war in Syria started in 2011. Kuwait has accepted just seven refugees, the United Arab Emirates, 16, and Saudi Arabia, only four. All right, so, so we stand corrected. We have to correct ourselves. We had zeros for everybody, the big donut, but it's actually 27 migrants have been brought into those countries 27 
compared to the hundreds of thousands that are heading to Europe through Turkey, uh, going in through Eastern Europe, going into Greece and the island of Lesbos, where uh, you have 